Hello students, welcome back to Clary Concepts, Unleashing Conceptual Learning. For more conceptual videos, you can log into our website claryconcepts.com. Today in this lecture, we are going to deal with one of the very very important topic of fluid mechanics, rather fluid kinematics which is fluid motions and its velocity and acceleration. So today, you are there are many students who face difficulty in this particular part of velocity acceleration in fluid mechanics and fluid kinematics. I request all those students to go through this lecture. I am 200% sure that once you go through this lecture, you will not have a single doubt in determining acceleration and velocity of the fluid flow. Okay. So before we move on to this particular topic, I would like to give you a brief understanding about fluid mechanics. We have understood that the fluid mechanics, what is fluid mechanics? Fluid mechanics is basically the, the branch of physical science that deals with fluid in rest or fluid in motion and its behavior when acted by the external forces. So, when you talk about the definition of this fluid mechanics is a branch of physical science that deals with the behavior of fluids which are at rest or in motion. So, when you study the behavior of fluid when, is, when it is at rest, you call that study to be the fluid statics. So, whatever we have understood about uh, pressure variation in hydrostatic fluid, hydrostatic forces, uh, buoyancy forces, stability criteria and all those study come under the category of fluid statics. From this lecture onwards, we are taking a step ahead and we will try to understand fluids in motion and its behavior and that study will be known as fluid dynamics. And one of the very important aspect of this will be understanding velocity and acceleration. So, there are many areas where fluid in motion is rather more important. You can, if you want to understand the dynamics of uh, you know drag force on the ship or racing car or air conditioning. So, there are many all these examples if you see at all these places fluids are in motion and if you want to study or if you want to design this kind of systems you need to first understand the behavior of fluids and its motion and there are two basic building blocks to understand the motion of fluid which is velocity and acceleration. Okay. So, let us start learning it. So, say for instance I have a I have a pipe a fluid pipe through which a fluid is flowing. Okay. Now, when fluid is flowing let us suppose that I represent the system from the Cartesian coordinate system, let us say x, y and z and uh, from origin I am marking one point over here and this point has the, has the location x1, y1, z1 from the designated Cartesian coordinate system. Now, if I ask you what is velocity of the fluid, you always first need to specify the location that at which location you are talking about and at which time you are talking about. So, when I say that location x1, y1, z1 and let us say at time t, the velocity at this particular point will be the velocity of the fluid uh, molecules associated with this particular point. So, let us say velocity is somewhere around v meters per second and we know that velocity is vector quantity and it has three components u, v and w, where u is velocity of the fluid particle in x direction, v is the component of velocity along y and w is component of velocity along z. So, basically when you dissolve this vector, you will have three components which very perpendicular u, v and w. You can see u along x, v along y, w along z. So, there are three components for velocity. So, in order to represent velocity completely, you must specify all these three components, right. So, velocity can be represented like this, v is equals to ui plus vj plus wk, where i, j and k are the unit vectors along x, y and z direction. I hope you know it. Now, if you talk about different point, now let us say for example, I have another point over here which has location x2, y2, z2 and at this location at another let us say even if you talk about the same location, at the same location at different instant of time let us say t2, the molecule over here will be different and the velocity will also be different. So, I can say that the velocity is a function of x, y, z also time. So, what you can say is if I write this in general, velocity is a function of x, y and z. So, let us say if I take a different point in, in the space, the velocity will be different right in general. At the same point, if you take a different time, the velocity will be different. So, velocity is a function of x, y, z and t, but rather velocity is what? It is the made up of three components u, v and w. So, that means u, v and w are inherently a function of x, y, z and t. So, I am representing it over here v, x, y, z, t of j plus w x, y, z, t of k. Now, which means what? This individual components u will also be different at different different points. Also, this component u will be different at the same point with respect to time. So, at different instant of time at the same point you can be different. 
it it may happen for unsteady flow so in general if i say in general u v w are the three component of velocity and each of them are the function of x y z that is space coordinate and also time t clear now this is the velocity is represented so let us say we talk about acceleration this is very crucial understanding acceleration of the fluid is very very essential and i now want you to play, pay 100% attention to this particular topic let us say a particle over here at x1 y1 z1 having velocity v at particular time let's say t okay now this particle is moving along the flow and has taken another position uh let's say uh, at and it was found over here at time t plus dt and velocity will be let's say some different velocity v plus dv so now if i talk about acceleration acceleration of the fluid particle can be represented as change in velocity dv divided by i mean rate of change of velocity yes dv by dt now we know that this is what this is what d by dt of v what is v i know v is u x y z of t of i plus v x y z and t of j plus w x y z and t of k isn't it so if you dissolve this and i know that well acceleration also has three component along x along y along z so i can write a as a x i plus a y j plus a z k as the component that is equals to if i individually apply derivative this will be d u by dt see i am not putting all this x y z now so, just so as to reduce the you know complications dv by dt of j plus dw by dt of k now understand this in order to know velocity acceleration i must know all these three values so if i compare both the sides left hand side and right hand side i can say that ax is equals to du by dt then ay is equals to dv by dt and az is equals to dw by dt see stay till the end of this lecture i am 100% sure you will really enjoy this particular topic now if you talk about du by dt see this is what change in u with respect to change in time now if you see total change in u when a particle has moved from here to here so when a particle has moved from here to here the x coordinate has changed yes y coordinate has changed yes z coordinate has changed yes time has changed yes now if you see the change in x coordinate is dx say for example change in y coordinate is dy change in z is dz and change in time is dt so when a variable or other you can say u is a function of x y z and t so the independent variable x y z and t if there is a change uh, in x by delta x in y by delta y z by delta z and t by delta t then what is the total change observed in this variable u and that is your du so let me now go a next step let's say ax is equals to du by dt so firstly i'll say what is du so du is a total change in variable u so if i talk about change in variable u with respect to x it is represented by del u by del x because u is a function of four independent variable and i hope you know that partial derivatives are used to represent the change of variable with respect to one of the independent variable right keeping others constant now this is rate of change of u with respect to x and what is total change in x it is delta x or rather you can say dx i can just put dx for better clarity i'll put sorry i'll put dx okay then this is so this will represent what del u by del x into dx will represent the very the change in u by the virtue of change in dx simple but when i move from here to here there is also change in y so now if i want to measure change in y with respect i mean change in u with respect to change in y this will be del u by del y into dy now it is also change in z has also happened so i can also write that change in variable u with respect to z and then dz this will represent the variable change in variable u with respect to change in z by the quantity dz right now time is also changed so i can say del u by del t into dt clear now if i if i take this change with respect to time if i denominator if i put the instead of time dt everywhere on both the sides what will i get you see so this will cancel so what i get is what is this du by dt it is, it is ax so acceleration along x component is basically 
del u by del x. What is this? dx by dt is change in variable x. I mean, travel in variable x with respect to time. It is u itself. It is a component of velocity in x plus del u by del y. What is this? This is dy by dt is v itself. That is change in position y with respect to t, a component of v. Plus, what is del u by del z as it is? And what is this? dz by dt. Travel in z direction with respect to time is w, component of velocity along along uh, this is distance by time so this is velocity along z plus this is del u by del t as it is and this will go to zero so if i rearrange the terms i can write ax to be equal to i will take i will take this term first so that it is easier for you del u by del t plus u del u by del x plus v del u by del y plus w del u by del z. So, this you have got is the first component of acceleration. Mind well, ax is the first component of acceleration. You look at this, AX is, a is made up of what? Ax, ay and az. So, now what is second component? Similarly, when I, when I go for second component, you will get, I will not go to derive second component again, but you will get del v by del t plus u del v by del x plus v del v by del y plus w del v by del z. Similarly, when you go for third component that is az, az will be equals to del w by del t plus u del by del x of w plus v del by del y of w plus w del by del z of w. We will solve the numericals to get more clarity on this. Now, see, don't don't get uh, afraid of looking at this expression. It is very simple to remember. How? Let me show you. See, a is equals to a x i plus a y j plus a z k. You know this three component of acceleration x y and z. Now, individually, if you want to know x y and z, what do you do? You know, you just write a x a y a z. What is your plan? See, I will just simply tell you, one component is del by del t plus another component is u with x, v with y and w with z. You see, all the three will have same things. So, you put the, you replicate this del by del t. So, you will have one for t, x and y and z. All four variables have came out. u del by del x plus v del by del y plus w del by del z then del by del t as it is plus u del by del x plus v del by del y plus w del by del z. Now if you want a x that means a x is dependent on mainly u that is velocity in y so, sorry velocity in x u means. So just put u everywhere u u u and u. A y is velocity acceleration in y so you will put take velocity in y so v v v Similarly, z acceleration in z, so you will take velocity in z, w, w, w. Now, if you compare this equation and this equation, they will both be same. You can check, right? Now, here the important part is to understand the equation. See, this particular, rather this particular component that is with respect to time, they are known as local accelerations. They are known as local accelerations. And this component with space, they are known as convective acceleration or you can say advective acceleration. Now, what does it mean advective acceleration? You should ask what does these two terms mean? See, if you look at each, each of the acceleration component, one is with respect to time another is respect to space. So, when a, you are standing at this particular point only and when you are standing here and when you see the velocity of particle coming towards you is changing with reference to time. So, when you are standing here and when you see the change in velocity with respect to time, that means you are observing the change in acceleration for local components. So, only with respect to time. And at the same instant of time, when you are quickly moving from one place to other place and the velocity of the change that you have observed, that is the acceleration for the convective part. So, when you are changing the space coordinate, 
and whatever change you observe in velocity that well this that basically is the acceleration for the convective part so in convective acceleration you keep time frame constant and you try to observe what is change in velocity at different different points in the domain physical points now let me make you this understand with one very simple example uh, what is convective part and what is uh, local part or what is convective change and local change let us say for example you are climbing the hill okay this is the hill basically and uh, you started climbing the hill uh, at let's say for example uh, you are standing over here so i'll just put the time frame say for example at 2 pm in the afternoon you were standing on the ground right so as you move i mean so if i talk about the temperature at 2 pm let's say on the ground the temperature was around uh, 30 for 35 degrees celsius for example let me put it like this 30 35 degrees celsius okay and somewhere over here the temperature was 30 degrees celsius over here it is 25 over here it is 20 so we all know that when you when you go above surface of the earth when you go at higher altitude the temperature will reduce okay now at 2 pm this was the temperature scale from 35 on the ground 30 at just uh, above it 25 and so as you go above at the same time time the temperature was this now let us say for example at 5 pm so at 5 pm temperature on the ground since at 2 pm it was 35 it will be less than that let's say temperature over here was 30 degrees celsius and temperature at the same location over here was 25 here it was 20 and here it was 50 now what is this see so for example why because from 2 to 5 the the sun has set on almost so temperature will reduce so on the ground 35 was at 2 pm obviously it will be less than that at, at 5 pm 30 degree and again from 30 degree if you go up the temperature will reduce from there on now if you see i will say you what is local what is advective now let us say for example you have started your journey at 2 pm so you are a superman and when you are a superman superman meaning you can travel the vertical height of let's say 8 10 kilometers within a fraction of second for example so when you are standing here at 2 pm and you can reach from here to here at 2 pm exactly within a fraction of second pura if you just go and come back so whenever you go within a fraction of second whatever temperature change you feel on your face from 35 to 20 degree that is called the uh, rather advective acceleration that means you are traveling in space but at the same constant time so whatever temperature if difference you feel it is because of the convective or advective part you are traveling in space now let us say you stand over here itself and you stand over here and at 2 pm you felt 35 on the same place at 5 pm you felt 30 degrees celsius so you have felt the change of temperature of 5 degrees but that too at the same place but you have traveled in time so that is the change that you have observed in temperature with respect to change in time and that is called local local meaning you are standing at the same physical space same location so at same location at different different time whatever temperature change you felt that is called local temperature change now let us say you have started a journey of climbing the hill at 2 pm so you were facing how much degree 35 degree you reached at this particular location over here but at 5 pm so now you are experiencing temperature 25 degree now you see you are experiencing 25 degree at this point of time you start journey at 35 so the change is 10 degree celsius so at at this particular point total change is 10 degree so you can see that 5 degree change is observed because of the traveling in space because you have changed the height and 5 degrees also because you have traveled the time from 2 to 5 so 5 plus 5 so that is why you are facing the change in 10 degrees so total change in temperature that you are facing when you are traveling in time and space both that is because of local change as well as the advective change so i hope you understood this part also right so in acceleration when you are traveling from one point to other point you are also traveling in time so total change in acceleration is this part both of them so that is made up of two parts one is local acceleration one is convective acceleration local meaning if you stand at the same point and you observe change in acceleration uh, you change in change in velocity at different time frame that is local and at the same time frame if you see change in velocity in different different points that is convective acceleration clear so i hope i made it very clear and uh, we'll see some numericals in the next class on acceleration velocity thank you so much for more such videos you can log into our website clericonsults.com thank you